G'day everybody. Today I want to talk to you about trolling for trout with winged lures. Winged lures, for those of you that don't know, are like a skinny little minnow, but instead of having a bib at the front allowing them to swim, they've got clear wings on the side. Probably the most well-known brand and well-respected brand in Australia is the Tasmanian Devil, or as we call them, the Tassie Devil. But there are quite a few, like all things in the fishing, in fishing industry, things get knocked off and ideas get stolen and replicated and copied with a slight little adjustment. The Tassie Devils are very well known and well respected, but there's also ones like this, which is a Sting, which I picked up at Premium Fishing in Wangaratta the other day, almost an identical lure. There's candlesticks, I think they're still around, Lofties, Cobras, and probably a whole plethora of other brands that I've never even heard of. But they all do pretty much the same thing. I've never known any of the brands not to swim properly. But Tassie Devils are probably the most easy to find. You can get them at Adventure Camping and Fishing in Wangaratta. And most decent tackle stores do stock Tassie Devils. Now they are, they are winged lures. And I may refer to them as Tassie Devils a lot of the time. But the winged lures are dynamite for trout. They swim through the water. I'll open this one up. They swim through the water with a very, very erratic action. A lot of minnows with bibs will just sort of sway side to side. Some will have a wide sway, some will have a real tight sway. But the winged lures, they'll have a big swinging action like that. And they can be trawled at a faster speed than a minnow. They don't sort of go up around in circles until you go too fast. But because of the winged action, sometimes it can be bigger than half a little bit and they can dance around and well, they can just go like that. But making them erratic makes the trout have to strike them a little bit harder to catch them. And these are dynamite on trout. I have heard of a few redfin being trawled at them. I even heard of a Macquarie perch being caught on one at Lake Dartmouth years ago. I feel that I am just the man to tell you all about these because Sandy Hector, my best mate, and I fished at Lake Dartmouth on Sunday using winged lures. We started before sunrise, well before sunrise. It was practically dark. We fished until it was practically dark after sunset, and for the whole day we caught one trout about 40 centimetres long. So that puts me in the hot seat to look like an expert. <laughs> Hey, seriously, folks, using the exact same techniques that we used last Sunday, we have had some really good sessions on the trout at Lake Hume, Lake Dartmouth, uh, Cancope and Pondage and Lake William Hovel, using the exact same techniques. On Sunday, they were just a bit quiet. But, winged lures. There's a few things that you can, you, like all lures, you can tie them on, throw them out and catch trout. But there's a few things you can do differently, a little bit extra, that will enhance your hookup rate and help you catch more fish. The original Tassie Devils, they'll come with a wire trace that goes through the body with a set of treble hooks on you. Just poke it through and you tie it to the front and that'll work. But the hookup rate isn't great. This particular brand, the Stinger, comes with a tiny little red bead that I'm sure you won't be able to see in that camera. And a single hook with a big hole and I'm pretty sure it's a sidewash hook. And you can rig that up, run the line through the lure, through the bead. The bead stops the hook from going into the bottom of the lure and just give, puts it back a bit further. And that single hook will have a much greater hookup rate than a set of trebles. What Sandy does, my best mate, the camo man, he will run the line through the lure, through a Tassie Devil, he uses Tassie Devils, through a bead, and then he'll use two sidewash hooks, which is similar to this, that face into each other. So that when they go through the water, the pressure forces them apart like a set of double hooks. And he reckons that that is the best possible way and creates the best hookup rates of the lot. But for starters, if you're using... I'm not a big one to talk about upgrading hooks on lures and, and stuff because I'm not one to stuff around. But when it comes to Tassie Devils, if you want to increase your hookup rate, you really need to get rid of the trebles, get rid of the wire trace, keep it simple, run the line through the lure, then through a bead, then tie it to a single hook. And even if you haven't got a fancy sidewash hook like this, just a single bait hook will do. As long as the bead's there to stop the hook from going up in. That's the first tip. And the second tip, tip is to make sure that you've got plenty of line out of the back of the boat. When you're trawling for Murray Cod with diving lures, now you might have 15 or 20 metres out. If you're down at Lake Mowale or down in the Murray where it's deeper, you might have a bit, fit, bit more line out than that again. When you're trawling for trout with winged lures, uh, in fact, when you're trawling for trout with anything, I find it best to have a heap of line out. I'm talking a lot of line, and it's not uncommon to have 60, 70 metres of line out the back of the boat. That way, your lure is a long way away from your boat. The further the lure is away from the boat, the better it is for the trout. Trout are quite a flighty fish and the boat can actually spook them, particularly if you're using a petrol motor, which makes things vibrate and just sends a bit more of an echo through the water. 
So that'll just force the trout to move away from the boat a bit. It won't send them scattering, it just moves them away. So by putting the lure further back, it gives it more time between when the boat passed that bit of water and when the lure passes that bit of water. And in that time, which may be two or three minutes, the trout may have moved in from surrounding areas that didn't know the boat was there in the first place. So that's your first tip, have a lot of line out the back. Another tip is to zigzag or go around in big circles. If you trawl in a straight line, your lure is going to go exactly where the boat was. Now, provided you've got a lot more line out the back, you'll increase your chances of coming across a fish because more fish will move back in. But by going in a straight line, you will be putting your Tassie Devils or your winged lures in sections of water that the boat never went through to start with. And that's a really, really important tip. Another great tip, and I think this may be only available with the Tassie Devils, is to buy at least one dual depth Tassie Devil. Now this one here, this Stinger, just has a standard front and back hole to rig it through. But Tassie Devils have come out, the Tasmanian Devil have come out with a dual depth lure with a toe eye on the top of the lure so you can rig it so it sits in a more vertical position and dives a bit deeper. The dual depth will get down to about six or seven feet, maybe a bit more. So early in the morning and late in the day when you've got those low light, low light periods, sorry, you can use these wing lures. They'll swim close to the surface and they'll catch trout. As the sun comes up, the trout often push down deeper. The clearer the water is in the lake, the deeper they tend to go down, just to get away from cormorants and any other natural predators. So by going with a, a dual depth, that will allow your, your lure, it'll still keep a wide sway. I think it's not quite as wide, but it's still pretty wide. But it will dive deeper down to where the fish are or closer to where the fish are during the daylight hours. That's another great tip. The greatest tip of all with any trout fishing in lakes, I think, is to focus all of your attention on the low light periods, or most of your attention. You'll still pick up trout during the day, but mornings and evenings, when the trout feel safe and secure, they will come closer to the surface and they will hit any lure, whether it's a minnow, a diving lure, or whatever. Something else that's very important when trawling with winged lures is your troll speed. When you're fishing, when you're trawling for redfin or cod or most other species, you want a nice, low, slow speed, and you're usually trawling at the slowest of your boat's idle speed. With your Tassie Devils, you can really ramp them right up. In fact, I think it's, it's much to your advantage to go faster. Now, Sandy Hector, the camo man, who's my best mate, and he's also the brains behind a lot, of my, a lot of my technical jargon because I'm not a technical person. I'm a simple person. Simple by name, simple by nature. Well, I'm not really simple by name. My name's not Robbie Simple, but it could be because it would suit. But anyway, I like to keep things simple. Sandy works out all the important stuff. He has calculated that he thinks that the best trolling speed on his depth sounder, when we're trolling with winged lures, is 3.8 to 4 kilometres an hour. Any faster, and I'll have a tendency to flip right over, and that can cause line twist. Any slower, and you're just not, uh, the trout have got more time to look at it and study it, and 3.8 is about the optimal speed. You'll get away with a bit faster or a bit slower, depending on what size winged lure you've got. But if you've got a sounder that gives you the speed or some kind of speedo on your boat or your kayak, aim for about 3.5, 3.8 kilometres per hour. A good thing to do is before you start trawling, just dangle your line out the side of the boat and just watch what your lure is doing. If you can see it's going around in circles like that, well then you want to slow down and get the speed right. Once you're happy with the speed, take note of how fast you're going. If you've got a sounder, look at your sounder. If you haven't, just look at the water and get a, a mental idea of how fast you're going so that you know what the optimal speed is for that lure. Sandy and I have had times where my lures needed to go slower than his because mine's going around in circles at the speed that his is running optimal. There's a lot of variations between brands and even between the same brand, between lures. But 3.8 is a good starting point. Dangle your lures out the side and just see what they're doing. Have them a long, a long way back behind the boat. Try and fish in a swayed manner and, and really make sure you're there in sunrise and sunset. And something for me personally, Sandy doesn't agree with me a great deal on this one, but this is something I like, is monofilament line. I'm not a big fan of light braided line for any sorts of trout fishing. Trout are notorious for jumping out of the water, shaking their head, and when they shake their head, they create slack in the line. Monofilament just gives you that little bit of extra stretch so that when they shake, the line will absorb an amount of that shake, and it may just be the difference between spinning the hook and keeping stuck in the fish's mouth. So I'm not a big fan of braid for trout fishing at any time. I like braided line. I use it on my cod gear and my yellow belly gear, and I've used it for some of my redfin stuff. But for trout in particular, I'm not a fan. I'd rather use four pound maximum ultra green line 
and I also find with these wing lures with braided line because it floats and because it doesn't have stretch because I like to have so much line out the back of the boat I find the braided line prevents the Tassie Devil from swimming properly now I know some people aren't going to agree with that and that's fine that's totally up to you but I'm just making this video explaining what I like to do and what works for me and I find that monofilament line works best when I'm trawling for trout with Tassie Devil lures particularly the smaller ones the little four gram Tassies they just don't swim for me with braided line but now one more thing this is how I've got one rigged up this is the one I used on the weekend at Lake Dartmouth when I caught all one of them fish <laughs> actually I landed one on this very lure I lost one on this lure and I lost one on a little wild bait minnow the line goes straight through the body of the winged lure through the bead and to the hook that lure is free it's not tied on it can slide up and down it can slide all the way back to the rod but it won't because when it's swimming and the water's pushing against it it forces it back to the hook you don't have to worry about it if that can come away from the hook at any time then that means you're fishing backwards <laughs> it's just not possible going forwards <laughs> so that's how it should look like a running sinker but it's a running lure all the way to the hook easy to rig up these ones are five bucks fifty i think the tazzies are six or seven eight dollars something like that they're not a deer lure wing lures aren't deer but they're very 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 effective my favorite color for trout is pink i always put a pink one on first if i don't have a pink i'll go a white or a yellow or something bright silver's a good way to start colors talking lure colors is like talking cars you know some people like holden some like fords lure colors vary and it's a personal choice but for me for trout fishing particularly most of my trout in lakes are caught in Lake William Hovland and Lake Dartmouth and I love pink winged lures so make sure you keep it a long way back from the boat that's the most important tip and try and sway if possible and if you've got an electric motor you can trawl behind well that's even better again